Okay, hello everyone, it's Keegan here again from Curious Engineering doing part three of the Digital Logic series from Altera University program. Um, so let's, let's take a look. Uh, again, if you haven't seen the uh, previous two videos, each part uh, builds upon itself, so make sure you uh, check it out um, so you know what's going on. Okay, so let's jump to part three. That's where we're at. Um, this is very similar to part two, so this should be a pretty quick video. Um, all that we're doing is we're expanding upon the multiplexer element. Um, oftentimes you will have more inputs than just two, which is your common two to one mux going from two inputs to one output. In this scenario, we're showing how you have three inputs and how you can get uh, one overall output. So we are doing that with two, two level, or sorry, two, two input muxes. So just multiple levels of muxes. And this one is, uh, that's really all it's asking for, but um, the three inputs are, let's zoom in here a little bit, don't mind this thing, I'll explain later. Um, so we have a high level overview of what we want to have happen. So we have input U and input V and an input W, and you can select between two of those, or you can select between those three with two um, selects. Um, S1 and S0. So depending on uh, how you toggle these selects, it will uh, choose U, V, or W to be the MUX output M. <coughs> so let's focus on the truth table and then I'll come back to this red thing here. So the truth table is saying, um, alright, S1, if you have it 0 and select 0 is 0, um, your output should be U, and if S1 continues to be 0 and S0 uh, goes to logic level 1, uh, select V, and uh, finally uh, the remainder, the, the remaining options should all map to W, so that would be 1, 0, and 1, 1. So let's, uh, I found out that this is actually inaccurate, um, so kind of a, it was a speed bump, I guess you could call it when I was doing this originally, but um, these are actually mixed up, and you can see that if you map these uh, scenarios to this truth table, um, these should be swapped, actually, so um, yeah, just something to note there. Now, we also want to continue the idea of having um, different bit widths, so in this case, we're going to have the inputs actually be two bits wide and the output should uh, correspond to a uh, two bit width um, as well. So not too crazy but the, the way we're going to implement this is again with the switches and the LEDs. So um, all that it's calling for here is just for you to utilize switch 9 and 8 uh, as your selects. So I'm going to select uh, S1 as switch 9 and uh, switch 8 um, as uh, S0. And then utilize switches 5 through 0 uh, to correspond to the U, V, and W accordingly. Um, there should be two switches per U, two switches per V, two switches per W. Um, <coughs> that's all I had. Let me do a little quick overview again. Maybe this was helpful to you, maybe not. Um, I kind of explained that, but this is what it looks like on your board. Again, W is going to be your uh, lowest switches. Um, W and this is the notation actually. If you're uh, as you progress in Verilog, uh, you'll see this notation elsewhere. So that's um, the number two, an, apo uh, an apostrophe sign, and then um, a letter. So that's two bit binary. So that's exactly what we want. Uh, you'll see other notation like two bit digital or two bit hex, two bit um, decimal, etc. But uh, again, W on these two switches, V on these two switches. Uh, U on these two switches. The output again, since it's only 2-bit binary, or 2-bit width, is the the MUX output is going to be also 2-bit, and it's going to be on these two LEDs. And I don't think it called for it, but I just added it just so I know what's on and what's off, but I'm going to throw in um, <coughs> switch 1 on switch 9, and then when that's active, so my LED should be active. Um, and then same for s select 0. If that is active, I want the LED to be active. So. Cool, not too much uh, outside of that, just um, I'm going to throw in something, make sure you're uh, something different with each video. If you are, you know, getting to this point and you're starting to be like, well, I need a little bit more assistance with Verilog uh, because it's com 
going to progressively get harder and harder. Make sure you pick up a reference. I'm going to do a close up. Um, this is one that I like in particular. Um, Verilog HDL by Samir Palnitgar. Palnitgar, sorry. Uh, anyways, it's a great reference. Uh, he's walks through everything very uh, well. He gives a lot of good examples and um, just one that I do like. So um, pick yourself that one, or pick pick that one up for yourself if uh, that's something you're interested in. Cool. Let's jump into the project. All right, so let's build the project here. So again, start up your Quartus Prime. We'll do the same thing as always. We'll create a project. Um, make sure we have a project folder. So I'm going to create one. Lab one, part three. Okay, select that. Same thing. Lab one, part three. Okay, empty project. Looks good. We're not going to add any files. Um, we will again search for our board of interest or our device that we want to target. Okay, found it. Not going to use any tools. And everything looks good. So creating it. And when it's done, we'll go again to our files. We'll create a source. Let's go this way now, actually. Very log file. <clears throat> okay, I will paste what I have. Alright, so this is our top level module. Um, so unlike last time where I had an error, I'm going to make sure that this is correct. So that matches my top level. Fantastic. Let's go ahead and save this. Make sure it is titled appropriately. It is. Good. All right, so what's going on here? Um, very similar to last time. Again, we're gonna we're gonna create uh, ten different switch variables. Um, we're gonna create input variables, I guess, or inputs, and ten different outputs uh, for LEDs. Are we're gonna use continue to use the assign the data flow uh, assignment um, for just uh, creating expressions, and for eight and nine, we're saying make a you know, switch 9 correspond to LED 9, switch 8 correspond to LED 8. Uh, so I'm saying that's my select 1, so there's nothing, I just have to remember that that's, that's select 1 and that, and that switch 8 is select 0, so just keep that in mind. Uh, I'm not saying like S1 by any means. So uh, Okay, now we get into the different scenarios. So we're using the same statement, so if you remember back on the, the two input mocks, uh, we use the same um, way of representing our <coughs> um, our mux, but again, it gets a little bit more complicated because we're throwing in yet another uh, select. So, so again, remember switches eight and nine are selects, and we're just listing out each scenario. So, I'm using um, I'm doing it twice because we're using two bit width. So we will start with. Um, and I have my comment down here, so switch 4 and 5, I've uh, allocated to the U variable, uh, U input I should say, and then that's for the scenario, we want that to be outputted when, let me see if I can bring this up actually. Okay, so apologies for my uh, struggle there, but what I'm going to do and what I was trying to do is just bring up the truth table because that's kind of like your yeah, your source of truth, if you will. Anyways, um, so if we have the scenario uh, switch one is zero and switch zero is zero, that's what's being shown here. We want that to select U. So again, uh, U is switch four and five, five and four. And then when you have the scenario of switch one is off again and switch eight, uh, the S zero select is on. Uh, which you can see by the lack of a tilde. Um, that is this scenario, and that is V. So that is being selected as uh, switch 3 and 2. That's what will be outputted. And that's our V. And then the final two scenarios both should result in the mul multiplexer outputting the, um, the W, um, which is these two scenarios here. So 
um, we just kind of repeat it, but then we make sure that we have the correct switches, um, those scenarios categorized. Cool. And we just turn off the remaining LEDs because we're not going to use them. Okay. So now that hopefully that clears something up for you, let us continue on. So we have that. Again, let's do our pin assignments. We will be efficient because we don't want to waste time. And we'll use our console. Let me just bring that up right quick. Again, um, if this is uh, questionable, I would head back to video number uh, part one. That's where we go through how to use this uh, efficient, efficiently as opposed to going one by one and entering your pin assignments. So, okay. So we have our pin assignments. We have pretty much everything we need. Let's uh, compile and fast forward. OK, and we're back, and we're done compiling. Let's, uh, again, check to make sure that nothing went wrong. So we are not going to use timing. That's OK. Let's check out our warnings. Uh, it's warning us again that we tied our LED to ground, but we don't, we're not going to use them, so it's totally fine. And everything else looks fine, so we're not using clocks, and we're, we're good. Okay, fantastic. Now one thing I haven't actually touched on is your compilation reports. So these are uh, displayed every time you do it, and it's trying to give you an idea of, like, what you are, maybe one of the takeaways, or one of the things that I'm looking at is um, how much of my FPGA capacity am I using. So I'm using less than 1% of my ALMs, and uh, I have about 457 on this board pins, and I'm only using 20 of them. So uh, as you can see, it, we're, we're really not using it to its full capacity, which is, which is fine for these scenarios. We don't want to be maxing it out at this level. So... Uh, this is good things, but yeah, just be something to be aware of and something to reference following uh, when you compile everything. Okay, um, now again, we're looking good, so let's program. Power it on here. And we'll wait for a second. Select it. Looks good. Let's detect it. Choose again our device. And let's try this way, actually. So we're going to add our file. Output file, SOF. Looks good. So that's just multiple. You can always add, you can add files here, or you can click on the uh, device you want to program. OK. All right, successful. And again, I will verbally go through kind of like what I want to have happen, and then I'll, I'll do a zoom in view for you. So what I'm going to be doing is for my U, I'm going to select that or set that to the 2-bit code of 0, 1, and V is going to be 1, 0, and W is going to be 1, 1. So what you will see is uh, I'm just going to toggle my selects, and uh, we'll do the first scenario. We'll do 0, 0 on the selects, and that should correspond to our U output. Um, which is good, so we should see a zero one. And if we do the switch zero high, um, that should correspond to our V, which it does. And if we do both of them, that should be one one, and it does. Fantastic, it works. Okay, so yeah, that's a pretty quick, uh, quick, pretty quick project. And uh, let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. And that's all I had, guys. See you in the next video.